Now we're on to the final challenge in the information security course. And the only thing we have left to do is to find a way to hash passwords synchronously and compare them synchronously. And synchronously basically means that um, it stops execution of anything else until this process is finished. And this is useful when you want your code to be flowing in a logical order. But obviously, like I said in the previous video, um, hashing is very computationally expensive, so it's not a good idea to use these methods, but we're gonna show you anyway. So uh, let's say I have this input and a number of salt rounds. So what I can do is I can say bcrypt um, dot hash sync, and inside it you give, so this is the hash, so you give first argument is the data, so this is just the input, and the second argument can either be um, a salt or number of salt rounds. So if I just give the number of salt rounds like this, what this will do is it will um, generate a salt with this. It'll generate a salt, and then it will use this um, dog input, and it will run the hashing algorithm for this number of salt rounds. And this method right here doesn't have a callback function because it's synchronous. And what it does is it returns the hash itself. So you can say let hash equals, and assign this to the variable hash. And then what I can just do is say console.log, and I can say um, hash and I can just put the hash in here. So if we run that now, we can see that this hash right here has been generated, oops. And it's been logged to the console right here. So we have the hash here. And again, um, the hashing algorithm is there. You can see the number of salt rounds. The salt will be the first 22 characters of this, and the rest of the characters is basically um, the hash itself. And Instead of giving the number of salt rounds, alternatively, what you can do is you can use a decrypt method um, like this, um, where you give the number of salt rounds to generate a salt. And then instead of giving the number of salt rounds to hash sync, you can just literally give the salt that you want to use. And that will also work. So if we run this, we can see that the salt is here. And then in the generated hash, you can see that after the hashing algorithm, the first like um, 22 characters right here is the same salt that we gave it before. So now we're going to look at how we can compare um, a plain text password to a hash synchronously. And the way you would do that is by using um, a method called compare sync. And it's basically like the compare method except it's synchronous. And the first argument to this is the input or the plain text that we're looking at. And the second argument is the hash, so this, which is this hash right here that we generated before. And this will return a Boolean and it will return true if the um, input is valid for the hash and it will return false if the input is not valid. Again, um, I don't know the exact algorithmic details, but I assume it's quite complex. So what you can do is just assign this to a variable like a result. And then we can do something like console.log and we can just do like new line in here and then say result and then put maybe another new line in here like this. So if we run this now, we can see that it's returned true. And the way it's managed to do that is basically from this hash right here, it's extracted the number of, it's extracted the salt, which is this right here. And then what it's done is it's taken this um, plain text input, which is this dog right here. It's run that hashing algorithm. It's mixed it together with this salt that it extracted from the hash. It's run it for eight times. And it's just basically checked if the result is the same as this, which in this case it was because we've used the same input. And you can see that it's returned true. And the way we can check this is if I change this input to something like cat instead of dog, and I run this, we can see that it returns false because when you use this salt and this many rounds for the input of cat, it returns a completely different um, hash right here and they don't match, so it's returned false. So that's basically how you can um, hash and then compare um, in a synchronous way. So what they want us to do here is under this start sync thing, um, they want us to use the um, hash sync method to basically hash this plain text password for 12 salt rounds. So we want to say let hash equals, and then we can do um, bcrypt dot hash sync, since we're using the sync method. And the first argument is the input, which is this plain text password right here. 
The second argument to this is the number, it's either a salt or the number of saltrons. And we can just give the number of saltrons and it will generate a salt for us automatically. So we can just give the number of saltrons here. So that's that's how you hash. And then the second thing they want us to do is basically just to compare this plain text password to this hash. So we can just say let result equals and then bcrypt dot and then the method is compare sync this time. And the first argument is basically the input, which is the plain text password here. And the second argument is going to be the hash that we're going to test it against. And that's this hash that we generated right here. And that should be everything you need to do for this challenge. So you can just go ahead and copy the live app link and then go ahead and submit it right here. And you'll see that it passes. Um, again, what, the ha what this does is it takes this plain text password and it use generates a random salt and then ha um, runs the algorithm 12 times to generate this hash right here. And then what this will do is it will take the play index password and it'll take the hash and it will find the number of rounds and the salt from the hash and it will apply the algorithm with that salt and number of rounds to this play text password and see if it matches this hash right here. And if it does, it returns true. If not, it returns false and that um, gets assigned to this variable result right here. And yeah, that's everything you need to do. And that was the final challenge in the information security course. And I would say um, it was actually a really interesting course. I expect it to be boring, but it was actually quite interesting. And it's good if you're interested in cybersecurity. And you can go ahead and submit that and then move on to the next course.